Well, folks, this is unequivocally amazing. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk just unveiled plans for a new version of the Orbital class rocket, the Starship version 3, which he says will have key upgrades over its predecessor. We've got a, a version 3 ship uh, design that will stretch the that be even taller, <laughs> probably end up being, I don't know, 140 meters before it's all said and done, maybe 150 in the end, in, in, in length. So, uh, so it'll be even taller <laughs> than it currently is. With 150 meters in height, the version 3 will be higher than the version 1 by up to 25%. Based on the previous speculations, version 2 will be stretched to 10% higher to get 132 meters in fully stacked status, meaning version 3 will be higher than the version 2 by roughly 20 meters. And since Musk did not go into detail, we can draw educated speculations based on the progression from Starship version 2. Besides, the upgrades could also increase Starship's payload lift capacity from roughly 100 metric tons to more than 200 metric tons per flight, straight from the horse's mouth. Well, this can make Starship become an unparalleled cargo behemoth in space, revolutionizing space travel with its impressive payload capabilities. To comprehend the scale of this accomplishment, one can envision that the cargo capacity of the Starship is equivalent to that of three Saturn Vs, each at 118 tons into orbit and about 12 shuttle payloads. Do you recall how it took almost 60 space shuttle launches to bring up the pieces of the 420 ton International Space Station? In this case, two single use SpaceX Super Heavy Starships could be left in space and bring more mass for a larger 500 ton space station. But just to be on the safe side, it'd be best to use at least three Super Heavy Starships to orbit. This would enable a central docking component and then two rotating Starship modules. The SpaceX Starships could then be left in orbit, but attached with walkways to form an almost 1,230-ton space station. Each of the Starships would have about 160 tons of dry mass and a 300-ton payload. Next, while the exact engine count for the version 3 remains a mystery, it may not surprise me if SpaceX introduces a more potent version of the Raptor engine to further enhance payload capacity. So far, the Raptor engine version 3 for Starship's version 2 is a newly manufactured version by SpaceX, first tested in May of 2023. The Raptor 3 has higher specific impulse, which is a measure of how efficiently a rocket engine uses its fuel, more thrust, and many other improvements, as stated by Musk. The current Raptor 2 engines produce 230 tons of thrust, whereas the Raptor 3s are expected to generate roughly 269 tons of thrust, marking a 17% improvement. Based on this, let's imagine how powerful the Raptor version 4 will be. As the company progresses through different flight versions, it aims to address various technical challenges, demonstrating the resilience and adaptability of the Starship design. However, SpaceX will continue to launch its version 1 Starship before debuting the upgraded versions. But in the meantime, SpaceX is already working on a massive Star Factory production facility to increase Starship production meaning that once it's fully up and running, SpaceX can immediately begin mass production of Starship version 3. More importantly, continuous development and upgrades are necessary for an unprecedented program like Starship. SpaceX is also constructing a second Starship launch pad at Starbase in South Texas. We're going to really be launching a lot and, up, and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we launch from another tower, so two towers is important. For Artemis missions, SpaceX will likely need to fly Starships nearly as often as they're launching Falcon 9 rockets, multiple times per week, to aggregate methane and liquid oxygen propellants into a storage depot in Earth orbit. Then, the human-rated Starship lander will launch into low Earth orbit, link up with the depot, and receive its full propellant load to head for the moon. NASA's astronaut crews will depart Earth on NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft, 
then link up with the Starship lander in orbit around the moon. Starship will ferry two of the four-person Artemis crew from Orion to the lunar surface, then back to Orion for the ride home. The human-rated Starship lander, the Starship depot, and Starship tankers will all launch on top of Super Heavy boosters from sites in Texas and Florida. This is an immense challenge. SpaceX has demonstrated its ability to dock spaceships in orbit, but no one has ever transferred meaningful amounts of cryogenic propellants while in space before. Nevertheless, Musk said he's confident that SpaceX can do it. Um, and that, that's a big deal. This is one of the fundamental technologies that's necessary um, to, to build a city on Mars and to have a, Mars, a moon base. Meanwhile, Axiom Space is preparing a charter mission to the International Space Station on a SpaceX Dragon tomorrow. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket will lift the multinational astronaut quartet and their SpaceX Dragon spacecraft skyward from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in the early evening Wednesday, January 17th. After roughly 36 hours of spaceflight, the Dragon capsule should dock with the ISS at about 5.15 a.m. Friday. Day. Once aboard the orbiting outpost, the astronauts will spend up to 14 days conducting more than 30 experiments and more than 50 outreach events. Axiom Space Communications Director Alex Desjarnet said during a press conference last week, We are all ready for our mission that we have been rigorously training and carrying on practicing in terms of science. As you know, I'm representing my beautiful country of Turkey as the first person to go to space. Mission Specialist Alper Gezerevci of Turkey said during last Thursday's press conference. After this mission, Axiom Space is marching on with a fourth private astronaut mission planned for this year. The Houston-based company is also developing the initial modules for its Axiom Station under a $140 million NASA contract. Axiom Station is to be the first of four potential U.S. commercial low-Earth orbit destinations prepared to inherit the scientific research and technology development activities now underway aboard the ISS. Congress has authorized ISS operations through 2030, and NASA currently is at work on a strategy to safely deorbit the orbital lab. It has been continuously staffed by astronauts and cosmonauts since November of 2000. Axiom Space is also working toward the launch of the first Axiom Space modules in 2026. They are to be initially attached to the ISS-US segment, but depart after the ISS is deorbited. These are what we call precursor missions, Lopez Alegria said concerning the company's evolving private astronaut venture. And finally, the idea of opening up space to more entities, more people, more countries, more researchers are things that are fundamental to the establishment of our station, he said. And for our last bit of news, Rocket Lab also plans to launch its first electron rocket of 2024 with Spire Global on top on Thursday. This mission will also feature a recovery of the electron's booster, another test before a full reuse of a booster on a future mission. In 2023, Rocket Lab squeezed out its first double-digit year with 10 electron and haste launches. In 2024, the company is looking to double that to 22. While this is far from SpaceX's goal of 148, yep, a new number, for the smaller market that Rocket Lab's in, that's nothing to scoff at. Thursday's launch will be for Spire Global, a partnership Rocket Lab has kept for a long time. The partnership goes all the way back to the two Lemur 2 satellites launched to orbit on Rocket Lab's second and first successful Electron rocket back in 2018. This mission will launch four space situational awareness satellites for Spire's customer, North Star Earth and Space. This is the first of what we're expecting to be five electron orbital flights this quarter, if schedules hold. Three of those missions will feature recoverable versions of the booster, this mission included. The launch will take place from Rocket Lab's private spaceport out in the Mahia Peninsula using LC-1B. The last time Rocket Lab used LC-1A, the company's original launch site, was in July of 2022, but no reason has been given as to why LC-1A isn't used anymore. Could be haunted. In Rocket Lab's continued move towards making its electron boosters reusable, the company has another test of its heat shield and waterproofing on this mission. This will be Rocket Lab's eighth attempted recovery of a booster. The New Zealand launcher has taken a less standard approach to recovery due to Electron's limited room for increased weight. Instead of saving the much-needed propellant and adding landing legs for a SpaceX-style propulsive landing, Electron has been given 
given a beefier heat shield, waterproofing, and parachutes for ocean splashdowns. The program has been successful, although the company has stated that it is not a perfect solution and that Electron will never have all of its missions become reusable. However, the company made a huge improvement last year in reflying one of its first stage engines on a mission successfully. The goal is to eventually refly an entire booster on a future mission, and according to Peter Beck, this might just be sooner rather than later for that to take place. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.